Texas is home to some of the oddest, creepiest, and most unusual animals you've ever heard of. It might come as a surprise, but this state is full of creatures you'll hardly see in other places. So, let's have a look at the most amazing ones. This truly beautiful bright blue creature is called the Blue Sea Dragon. Despite such an imposing name, the critter is actually tiny, usually no bigger than a grape. You may find it on the beach or floating beside you in the water. Now, you need to remember one thing. However pretty this little slug may look, never ever touch it. One tourist spotted a few of these pretty dragons on the shore of Mustang Island. He scooped one of the creatures up. He wanted to film it. Luckily, he put it back into the water before it could sting him. Otherwise, it would have ended badly since the Blue Sea Dragon is venomous. Despite their tiny size, their sting can pack a punch. All because of their diet. Their favorite dish is the Portuguese man o war a jellyfish that has enough venom to paralyze small fish and crustaceans. The blue dragons first use mucus to neutralize the jellyfish's infamous stinging cells. And then, they steal these cells from the man o war's tentacles and store and concentrate them within their own tissues. Then, they release these stinging cells on contact, which makes their own sting more powerful, even worse than that of the man o war itself. These awesome creatures are also extremely sneaky. Even though their appearance is bright, to say the least, they're well-known masters of disguise. You see that vibrant blue coloring is actually on their bellies. And when they float on their backs, they simply blend with the water. As for their backs, they're gray to camouflage these animals on the seafloor. Now, how about a funny fact? A group of tiny dragons floating together is called a blue fleet. And another fact. Blue dragons normally lay a string of around 16 eggs, and it takes them three days or so to hatch into larvae. Blue sea dragons rarely make it to the shore. They're soft-bodied, so when the animals finally get through the surf zone and are deposited on the shore, they're already broken apart. And still, watch out! Even in this case, the venom in their bodies doesn't dissipate. But of course, blue sea dragons aren't the only unusual animals inhabiting Texas. Have a look at this nightmarish creature. Poisonous, slimy, and kinda immortal. Meet the hammerhead worm. The worst thing? It might be lurking in your garden while you're watching this video. You can easily recognize this worm by its creepy spade-shaped head. It doesn't look like any other invertebrate you've ever seen or any other creature, that is. At first, it was only found in East Texas. But later, researchers spotted these spine-chilling creatures in North, Central, and South Texas. Basically everywhere but the arid areas of West Texas. One of the most terrifying things about this worm might be its length. This creature can grow as long as one foot. Luckily, such giants aren't very common. Most hammerhead worms only reach 6 inches in length. You can come across two species of these worms in Texas, and both of them will have a dark stripe down the middle. The larger of these two species munches on earthworms, which is actually a big problem. You might know that earthworms play an important role in keeping the soil rich in minerals and overall healthy. If earthworms disappear, plants in such areas won't be getting the nutrients they need. Even for humans and pets, meeting a hammerhead worm isn't the most pleasant experience either. Hammerheads are the only terrestrial invertebrates that secrete a very dangerous neurotoxin, the same as pufferfish produce. Thanks to the sheer size of the human body, touching a hammerhead worm won't hurt you too much, but it may still cause your hand to start tingling or even go numb. It's much more dangerous for pets. There have been cases when dogs ate hammerheads, which left them feeling sick for the whole day. Interestingly, these worms are native to Southeast Asia. But they must have mastered the art of hitchhiking, since in the early 1900s, they were already found in the U.S. Keep in mind that if you want to get rid of a hammerhead worm, which is the best course of action, the worst thing you can do is chop it with a shovel. The thing is, 
flatworms reproduce by ripping themselves in half. So by cutting it, you actually help the populations of the worms, turning one into two. That's the reason why hammerheads are sometimes described as immortal, which is a bit of a stretch since these creatures can't survive in vinegar or salt. Now, even though you're safe from the hammerhead worm in West Texas, it doesn't mean you can't come across another dangerous animal, such as the land lobster from hell. These creatures are also known as vinegaroons, and they're not real crustaceans. They're arachnids. Huh? Who would have guessed? Anyway, these eight-legged critters have a really nasty bite, but it's not the worst thing about them. Land lobsters, brace yourself. Spray vinegar like 85% acid from their tails. Mostly they do it to protect themselves, but it still sounds like an unfriendly thing to do, right? A land lobster can also pinch a finger that's gotten too close with its heavy mouth parts. At the base of their abdomens, vinegaroons have long whip like tails. That's why these arachnids are often called whip scorpions, even though they're neither related to scorpions nor have stingers. Summer rains lure these arachnids out of their burrows in search of food and love. Luckily, experts claim that land lobsters aren't poisonous to humans, but they're very likely to leave a mark with their large pinchers, which they use to capture insects. Vinegaroons can be considered useful since they eat millipedes, crickets, scorpions, and cockroaches. They hunt by sensing the vibrations of their prey with those long front legs of theirs. Since land lobsters prefer to come out after dark, you aren't likely to see one in the daylight. But if you stumble upon one, check it out. If it's a female, it may be carrying her hatchlings on her back. Now, imagine it's the middle of spring and you're walking among blooming flowers and greenery. Suddenly, you spot something extremely bizarre on the ground. The animal looks cute, fluffy, and soft looking. The desire to touch it is irresistible. Watch out! The sting of the hairy caterpillar can pack a serious punch. This one is called the pus moth caterpillar, or asp. There are several stinging caterpillar species in Texas. The buck moth caterpillar, spiny oak slug caterpillar, saddleback caterpillar, and eo moth caterpillar. And touching any of them can lead to unpleasant consequences. If you had touched that pretty hairy thing in the park, you'd most likely start feeling a burning sensation and develop an itchy rash. In the worst case scenario, you'd even have to go to the emergency room. The main problem is that people react very differently to caterpillar toxins. Some may develop more severe reactions than others. Plus, how bad the consequences are also depends on the thickness of the skin in the affected area. In most cases, the unpleasant sensation and rash go away in a few hours or sometimes days. On the bright side, such caterpillars later turn into moths and butterflies that help pollinate flowers and trees. Getting rid of these critters means doing a massive disservice to the area where you live. Specialists are sure that coming across a stinging caterpillar won't lead to anything bad if you keep in mind the rule of thumb. If a caterpillar looks fuzzy, don't touch it. And the best solution to dealing with such creatures is educating people on what such caterpillars are, what they look like, and why it's dangerous to touch them with unprotected hands. You're walking along the riverbank. It's quiet, save for the water's peaceful burbling. The hot Georgia sun beats down on your neck. That's when you notice something strange on the ground. Looks like a quarter-sized black coin with a weird pattern on it. You bend over for a closer look. Is it a coin? This thing looks like an ancient seal with a symbol carved in it. It's probably from some long-lost civilization. You could sell it and make a fortune. You crouch down on one knee to pick up your newfound treasure. As soon as your finger touches it, you pull your hand back as fear wells in your gut. It's hairy. You go to pick it up again digging your nails in the dirt around it to pull it out of the ground. That's when it moves. Your heart jumps in your throat. It's pounding so hard you can feel it in your head. The fear turns to horror when the coin wiggles its way out of the ground. It's no ancient treasure. 
It's a huge spider! A ravine trapdoor spider, to be precise. This hard, coin-looking growth on the back of its body serves as a shield. The eight-legged terrors burrow into the ground and plug it like a cork so hungry enemies can't get to them. Or, you know, giant confused humans like you. The spider is venomous, but its bite isn't toxic to humans. Who, lucky you! But I didn't say you wouldn't feel it. Best stay away from those sizable pincer-like fangs. Ow! Well, so much for your riches. Perhaps fortune awaits you in Mexico's Baja California Peninsula. You're walking on dried-up ground when you notice a long white stripe up ahead. You get closer. Oh, looks like a super long worm, you think to yourself. But it doesn't move like any worm you've ever seen. That's when you see it has arms and a head. This pale creature with black beady eyes is a Mexican mole lizard. It lives in the ground where all its dinner of insects and termites hang out. It rarely comes out, so you're pretty lucky to have seen this bizarre reptile. Now you're in a rainforest in northeastern Australia. Ahead, half hidden among the trees, you notice something large and round. This mysterious figure lying on the ground is covered in black hair. At first, you think it's a bear curled up sleeping. But that wouldn't make any sense. There are no bears down under. You're getting closer when a twig snaps under your foot. The thing hears you and springs to its legs. It turns to you, and you now see this is a bizarre and beautiful bird. That black hair is actually a thick coat of long, fine feathers. This formidable fowl has a bright blue head with a large horn on top. It stands on two powerful legs with a dagger-like claw on each foot that can be as long as your hand. Take away those feathers, and you might mistake this thing for a velociraptor. But it's actually a cassowary, the most dangerous bird in the world. It could jump straight over your head if it wanted to, definitely high enough to kick you in the chest. And its blows are strong enough to break bone, not to mention that claw that can cut through anything like butter. This bird was made to hunt and avoid being hunted. Don't even consider running away. Not unless you, too, can sprint over 30 miles per hour. Diving into that lake over there won't save you either. This bird is an excellent swimmer. Best just to back away slowly and hope it doesn't come after you. Another creature that proves it's best to keep your hands to yourself is the panda ant. The naming is obvious. It's black and white and furry like the beloved bamboo-chewing bear. This furry little bugger lives in the forests of Chile. But don't go to pet this fluffy little ant. What you're looking at is no ant at all. It's a species of wasp. That black and white coloring serves one purpose, to warn others of this insect's powerful sting. And if that doesn't make you back away, the wasp will let out a squeaking sound. It sounds cute to us humans, but it means a painful sting is around the corner. These insects are loners. They don't live in colonies and don't have nests. They're also parasites. A female panda ant lays eggs next to the larvae of another insect. Then, the hatched babies use these larvae as food. Surely you've seen bugs that look like leaves and twigs. But what about a creature that looks like a beautiful orchid? You can find this fragrant flower in the forest or a green field among other plants. But make sure that's a flower you're leaning in toward to smell. If it's not, you risk being bitten by a praying mantis. The orchid mantis is nearly impossible to distinguish among the flowers. It has pink-white coloring with legs and claws that look identical to little petals. It uses its resemblance to the plant to hide from predators and hunt insects that love these flowers. A butterfly or a bee flies up to the flower when one of the petals starts moving. The unsuspecting meal might take it as simply the wind. But then the petal turns into a sharp claw that suddenly grabs the insect. Now imagine you're in the jungles of Costa Rica. You notice a brown snake sitting on a tree branch in front of your face. The snake looks like it's about to strike. Wow, you want to run away as far as possible. But notice that this snake is unusually short. And it doesn't lash out at you. You wait, but the snake keeps staring at you. It doesn't even hiss. (laughs) Lucky for you, it'll never bite because it's not a snake, but a caterpillar. 
The hawk moth caterpillar can change the shape of its body to look like a menacing serpent. This easily scares away any hungry foes. The coloring and pattern on the skin imitates a snake's scales and eyes. This insect also knows how to move like a reptile. A master of disguise, this one! Let's get out of the hot jungle and head to Central Europe. You're in the middle of a sunny green meadow. Colorful flowers bloom around. Birds sing and bees buzz by. Among the bees, some are not what they seem. You'd hardly be able to distinguish the imposters. But if you look really closely, you'll see the golden bee fly moving through the air. It looks like a bumblebee, but it's the buzzer's biggest enemy. The golden bee fly sneaks into bee nests and lays eggs there. Its larvae hatch and feed on the bees and flower nectar. The yellow and black coloring allows the intruder to go undetected the whole time. The camouflage also keeps enemies away. Nothing would touch this fly if it thinks it'll get a bumblebee sting. The next spot on your journey is the rainforest in southern Thailand. Now, be extra careful and watch your step. Not because the next animal is poisonous or bites, but because you might actually step on it. The leaves from the trees have fallen and turned a gray-brown hue. Among these leaves, it's tough to distinguish the Malaysian horned leaf frog. Its body shape, coloring, and especially those pointy growths coming out above its eyes all allow this amphibian to hide perfectly among the fallen foliage. This frog can sit for hours in one place, waiting for its next meal to come close enough to... Now you're in a garden. You see a beautiful bright flower and a small bird hovering near it. The bird flaps its wings so quickly you can hardly see them. And that long, needle-like beak makes you immediately assume you're looking at a hummingbird. But as soon as you get closer, you realize this is not a bird, but an insect. Fortunately, the hummingbird hawk moth isn't venomous and doesn't sting. It's just a lovely little creature that decorates the garden with its presence. Many people even grow plants rich in nectar to attract these moths. Hey, that's an idea! Look at this pretty creature. It looks cute and totally harmless. But you should know that appearances are deceptive, and the blue-ringed octopus is an extremely venomous species of octopus. In fact, they are one of the world's most venomous marine animals. These creatures are found in tide pools and coral reefs. Despite their small size, a mere 5 to 8 inches, they are very dangerous to humans if provoked. Their venom contains a powerful neurotoxin called tetrodotoxin. When the animal feels threatened, its first instinct is to flee. But if the threat persists, for example, if you don't give up the idea of picking the octopus up, it will go into a defensive stance and display its blue rings. If the octopus is cornered and touched, it may bite its attacker, and it can end very, very badly. Tetrodotoxin causes severe consequences and sometimes results in total body paralysis. When the victim is fully aware of the surroundings but unable to move, the victim remains conscious and alert, but because of the paralysis, there's no way of signaling for help or indicating distress. Interestingly, in its chilling mode, the blue-ringed octopus looks brown or even pale, but once it feels endangered, it switches on its psychedelic pattern. Such a response is called aposomatic behavior. In simple words, it's when an animal flashes bright colors warning others that, should they take a bite, they won't live to tell the tale. Of course, the blue-ringed octopus isn't the only dangerous animal that looks harmless out there. For example, look at this creature. This animal looks super cute, fluffy and soft looking. The desire to touch it is irresistible. Watch out! The sting of the hairy caterpillar can pack a serious punch. It's called the puss moth caterpillar, or asp. Hidden among that luxurious fur, there are venom spines equipped with stinging cells like jellyfish. People react very differently to caterpillar toxins. Some may develop more severe reactions than others. Plus, how bad the consequences are also depends on the thickness of the skin in the affected area. In most cases, the unpleasant sensations and rash go away in a few hours or sometimes days. The next animal on our list is the poison dart frog. There are more than 170 species of these frogs, and funnily enough, not all of them are actually poisonous. Those which are secret, extremely dangerous toxins through their skin. On the bright side, the frogs never use these toxins for hunting or attacking. They only have them for self-defense. Experts aren't sure, 
but they suppose that the frog's ability to produce these toxins might come from a diet rich in toxin-containing animals, for example, centipedes or ants. Indigenous peoples in Central and South America have been known to rub their arrows and darts on the frogs in order to give them a poison tip. The main thing you need to keep in mind, if you touch a poison dart frog, seek assistance immediately. Especially if you've come across the golden poison dart frog, it's the most toxic one. The flamboyant cuttlefish is the only known venomous cuttlefish species. This creature has incredibly poisonous muscle tissue, despite its tiny, two to three inches at most, frame. Watch out for a dark brown underwater animal with two tentacles and eight arms. It's also likely to have purple and yellow around its arms. Anyway, your best bet is to avoid biting into one of these intriguing creatures, and you'll most likely be safe. Predatory cone snails are very slow animals. This is the main reason why they have no means to capture their prey mechanically. I mean, they can't really grasp another animal or bite it. Instead, the cone snail has evolved potent venom that helps it survive. Probably the coolest thing about these creatures is that among almost 1,000 species, there's no overlap in the toxins produced by each of them. Even though cone snails don't have fangs, they have a venom-covered harpoon they use to sting their prey. There's a tube-like structure at the end of a venom bulb, and a modified tooth can shoot out of the tube at a mind-boggling speed of 400 miles per hour. So being slow pokes doesn't actually bother cone snails. And since the venom is unique to certain species, some of them can deliver a minor sting, while others might cause serious harm to your health. For example, this reef-dwelling little fella unleashes a harpoon-like tooth to sting its prey, and there is no known cure for its venom. When you think of puffer fish, you probably imagine a bloated-looking creature with impressive 360-degree quills. But beneath those funny spikes, there is a vicious creature. And the most dangerous part of this creature is its poison, which is considered to be one of, if not the, most dangerous and potent in the world. The good news is that you won't get poisoned unless you eat the fish. So maybe better stick to the California roll. Now look at this insect and try to never approach it. It's the Japanese giant hornet. This monstrously sized creature, which can grow to be almost two inches long, is known to be highly aggressive. Its impressive stinger packs enough venom to make the sting very, and I mean it, painful. Some people don't survive being stung by this insect. Even though the venom isn't the most potent, the large size of the creature makes the dose too big. And if it's not one but several hornets attacking you, well, the consequences are likely to be dramatic. The giant hornet isn't necessarily unfriendly toward people or other animals, but it will sting if you provoke it. This truly beautiful bright blue creature is called the Blue Sea Dragon. Despite such an imposing name, the critter is actually tiny, usually no bigger than a grape. You may find it on the beach or floating beside you in the water. Now, you need to remember one thing. However pretty this little slug may look, never ever touch it. Despite their tiny size, their sting can pack a punch, all because of their diet. Their favorite dish is the Portuguese Man of War, a jellyfish that has enough venom to paralyze small fish and crustaceans. The blue dragons first use mucus to neutralize the jellyfish's infamous stinging cells, and then they steal these cells from the Man of War's tentacles and store and concentrate them within their own tissues. Then they release these stinging cells on contact, which makes their own sting even more powerful, even worse than that of the Man of War's itself. These awesome creatures are also extremely sneaky. Even though their appearance is bright, to say the least, they're well-known masters of disguise. You see, that vibrant blue coloring is actually on their bellies. And when they float on their backs, they simply blend with the water. As for their backs, they're gray to camouflage these animals on the sea surface. The Arukanji jellyfish, found in Australia, looks tiny and totally innocent. But appearances are deceitful and this baby, the size of a human thumbnail, is actually extremely dangerous. During stinger season, which lasts from November to May, tons of beaches get closed because of these itsy-bitsy creatures. What makes the jellyfish particularly dangerous is their miniature size. People simply fail to notice them while swimming. The infamous box jellyfish, named for its cubic body shape, lives in the Indian and Pacific Oceans. Stay away if you spot a creature with a squarish bell and long, dangling tentacles. And even if you only see a single tentacle without the jellyfish attached to it, don't come close or touch it. The box jellyfish can grow up to 10 feet, and each of its tentacles has about 500,000 microscopic harpoons, 
to inject venom. Unlike other jellyfish, box jellyfish are hunters. They can latch onto you by wrapping their slender tentacles around your limb or body. With how dangerous their venom is, it won't be a pleasant experience. Have you ever seen a sea cucumber lying on a bed of sand and thought it looked like a blob? Well, these creatures may seem squishy and defenseless, but they actually have some fascinating strategies to keep themselves safe. Biologists uncovered chemical compounds with the help of which sea cucumbers protect themselves from predators and even from their own toxins. And guess what? These compounds might be useful for human health. When sea cucumbers feel threatened, they can expel thread-like parts of their bodies. These tubes immobilize predators in a sticky, toxic embrace. The toxicity comes from some chemical compounds commonly found in plants. Interestingly, these chemicals are much less common in animals, but sea cucumbers have evolved to use them to their advantage. The substances are also known for their antioxidant and anti-inflammatory properties. They're already used in a bunch of industries, like cosmetics. But using these chemicals as a defense creates a big problem for sea cucumbers. They need to avoid damaging themselves with their own toxins. It means their own cells can't contain cholesterol, the target that the toxins bind to and pierce. Instead, sea cucumbers have developed two kinds of cholesterol alternatives. It's a self-defense strategy, you see? If you can produce these toxic substances, you have to be able to not make yourself sick. Smart and cute as they are, now you know not to touch a sea cucumber should you ever stumble upon one at the beach. Speaking of things you should avoid at the beach, let's move on to the marbled cone snail, a creature so unique and dangerous that it'll make your head spin. This one is quite the world traveler. It can be found all the way from the southern tip of India to Okinawa, Japan, and southeast to New Caledonia and Samoa. That's quite an impressive range. And it's not just where it's found that's interesting, it's how it hunts. This snail may be small, but it's a fierce predator. It loves to chow down on other snails and sometimes even its own kind. When it's hungry, it'll stick out its long white tooth and shoot a poison-laden harpoon at its prey. And if that doesn't do the trick, it'll attack its prey multiple times over, just to be sure. Talk about determination, right? Once the harpoon hits its mark, the prey becomes immobilized and its muscles begin to relax irreversibly. And when the prey is helpless, the snail can begin to munch on it. Where can you find this fearsome creature, you might ask? Well, it's found in fairly shallow waters, typically on coral reef platforms or lagoon pinnacles, as well as in sand, under rocks, or among the seagrass. Watch your step the next time you're out for a swim, just saying. On the bright side, did you know that this snail's venom is being developed as a potential treatment for pain? Some of the chemicals found in this substance have been studied, and they're showing promise. Who knew that this unusual predator could have a softer side too? Next on your list of creatures to avoid should be a little fish called the stonefish. Now you might think this sounds like a cute little pet rock, but let me tell you, it's not to be messed with. In fact, it's the most venomous fish in the entire ocean. These guys are masters of disguise, blending right in with their surroundings at rocky or muddy bottoms of marine habitats in the Indo-Pacific region. They're like the ninjas of the sea, waiting patiently for their prey to swim by before swiftly attacking and swallowing it whole. But here's the thing, you could easily swim right by a stonefish without even realizing it's there. Now, I know what you're thinking. I don't want to accidentally step on a stonefish. And trust me, you really don't. These guys have a lot of spines lining their backs, and they release venom when they're stepped on. Ouch! That venom can cause terrible pain, swelling, and damaged tissues. Not exactly a good day at the beach, if you ask me. But don't worry, the stonefish isn't out to get you. It uses its spines defensively, not offensively. So, as long as you're not disturbing it or stepping on it, you should be fine. 
just be careful where you step and maybe invest in some water shoes. And if you do happen to get stung, seek specialized attention immediately. It's best to always look where you walk, shuffle your feet along the bottom to avoid stepping directly on the fish, and wear water shoes when you're in an area that could be home to stonefish. Have you ever had the pleasure of meeting a lionfish up close? They're such beautiful creatures with all those colors and fins that look like wings and accessories. It's easy to be mesmerized by their elegance, but don't be fooled by their stunning appearance. They're not to be messed with. In fact, they're one of the most dangerous fish in the ocean. If you get stung, you'll experience a lot of pain, maybe even some allergic reactions. Lionfish inject venom through their needle-sharp dorsal and pelvic fins. They're not aggressive and won't sting you out of the blue, but they will act in self-defense if provoked or caught. It's not just their venom that makes them dangerous. They also have tiny teeth. But instead of using them to bite predators, they have something even more dangerous, their fins. The lionfish uses these spine-like fins to ward off predators. And unfortunately, that includes humans. So, while it might be tempting to swim up close to a fish and say hello, beware of its sharp spines. But here's the thing. Lionfish can be eaten. Some say they're actually quite delicious. And since they're a threat to reef ecosystems, human consumption is encouraged. Just make sure you remove the venomous spines first. If you're snorkeling or swimming near the corals in the Atlantic or Pacific Ocean, you might encounter these stunning fish. Keep a reasonable distance between you and the lionfish and they won't feel threatened or startle enough to sting you in self-defense. Sea urchins might also cause some trouble if stumbled upon. Don't worry, they won't be jumping off the reef and flinging spines at you. They're not aggressive at all. These creatures are everywhere, from rocky shores to coral reefs, and are quite common in almost every body of salt water, including all of the world's oceans. So it's not surprising that sea urchin injuries are pretty common too. But hey, accidents happen especially when we're distracted by a cute little turtle or too excited about exploring a new dive site. Now, let's talk about their defense mechanisms. These little guys have two ways of defending themselves, their spines and these tiny jaw-like structures that can inject a painful substance. Some species have long, sharp spines that can easily pierce even a thick wetsuit and lodge deep in your skin. Yikes! But don't worry, avoiding sea urchins is not rocket science. Just try to maintain a good awareness of your surroundings. Watch out for protruding spines in the sand and control your buoyancy. It'll help you stay at least a few feet away from corals, which may conceal urchins in their crevices. And if a shore entry has many urchins, pick a different dive site, no biggie. Now let's talk about first aid for sea urchin stings. Soaking the area in hot water for up to an hour and a half can break down the dangerous substance and alleviate the pain. Carefully remove the spines with tweezers and shave the area to remove those pesky spikes. Then wash the injured area with soap and rinse with fresh water. Apply topical creams if you have any in your beach bag too. And of course, watch for signs of allergies and contact a specialist immediately if you notice something weird. But hey, let's not forget that sea urchins are just one of many hazards of the deep. There are bearded fireworms, pufferfish, and fire coral too. So let's not be too hard on our little urchin friends. After all, compared to some of these other creatures, they're pretty tame. The King Cobra, Black Widow, Giant Hornet, Scorpion, and the Horsefly. They can all bite, sting, and inject venom into your body. It usually hurts. You experience burning sensations. Your body might react unpredictably. But if you hurry, doctors will help you. The bite site will hurt for a few days, but then you'll forget about it. But what if you get a sting that you can never forget? Caused by a plant that looks absolutely unremarkable. You may not even notice touching it but your body will react immediately. 
Just being near this plant can cause choking and coughing. Your eyes will start watering. But if you accidentally touch it, well, the pain will last for several days, weeks, months, or several years. Even after a long time, this unpleasant feeling can return at unexpected moments. You'll remember coming across this plant for the rest of your life, that's for sure. And this is not a cactus with sharp needles I'm talking about. Neither is it poison ivy. At first glance, this is an ordinary green bush with broad leaves. The good news is that this plant only grows in particular areas in Australia. It's called the Gimpy Gimpy. Gold miners discovered it in 1860 near the town of Gimpy. And most likely, it was an unpleasant find. Before you go to the forest to search for this plant, you need to put on a protective mask, and you'd better opt for a gas mask or respirator, thick clothes, and sturdy boots. Tuck your pant legs inside your boots, wear protective gloves, and you're all set. You don't have to go far into the wild. This plant grows on the edge of the forest, next to streams. You pass by some trees and come closer to the water. Here, in a dense thicket, you notice this dangerous bush. It can grow up to 10 feet tall. And its dark green heart-shaped leaves with jagged edges can grow up to a foot and a half wide. This plant can easily be confused with nettle or burdock. The only thing that can help identify Gimpy Gimpy is a thin layer of fluff covering its leaves. It's like it's encouraging you to stroke it. But don't fall into this trap. This is not fluff. It's tiny toxic hairs. They're not only on the leaves, but also fly around the plant. If you remove your gas mask, you'll feel as if ground pepper has got into your nose. You'll have an uncontrollable sneezing fit. Your nose will itch. It'll become difficult to breathe. Your tongue will swell. Your eyes will feel as if they're on fire. And if you stay there for some time, this plant will seriously damage your health. For many years, the Gimpy Gimpy caused huge problems to loggers and hunters. Even when they knew about its existence, they often accidentally touched it while working. This was enough to make people sick for several weeks. There were cases where sting sites hurt for decades. One man said he felt pain for two years after touching the plant. He experienced extremely unpleasant sensations every time he took a cold shower. People compare this feeling to the sting of 30 wasps simultaneously. And the worst thing is that doctors can hardly help in this situation. Even an old dried leaf lying on the ground presents a serious danger. You can drop your phone or glove, try to pick it up, and accidentally touch the gimpy gimpy leaf. To study it, you need to use a pair of tweezers to take a leaf and put it in a vacuum sealed container. Done! Now you can transport your sample to the laboratory and reveal its secrets. The gimpy gimpy is one of the six species of stinging trees native to Australia. It grows in the sun, surrounded by other plants. And, most surprisingly, there are holes in its leaves. But before we find out what creatures feed on one of the most dangerous plants in the world, let's study its poison. The bush is covered with tiny hairs, and even one of these hairs can cause big problems. It's so thin and small that it can penetrate your skin and stay there for several months or even years. Water doesn't wash it out. It only enhances the effect of the poison. A tip of the hair opens up when it comes into contact with some surface. Then it injects a potent toxin. After that, you feel a burning sensation. Half an hour later, the feeling gets worse. Your skin starts pulsating and turns red. You never know how long the effect is going to last. It all depends on the number of hairs you've come into contact with. But what precisely is this toxin? How can it cause so many problems? Scientists still don't know for sure. They can't say which components of the poison cause the burning. The effect of the toxin lasts for a long time. High or cold temperatures don't stop it. After a few years, you can put pressure on the affected spot and feel that the poisonous hairs are still there. Pluck one leaf and throw it on the ground. Then come back a hundred years later and touch this leaf you'll feel the unpleasant sting again. 
the botanical samples of the Gimpy Gimpy still remain dangerous in many laboratories. With such toxic leaves, Gimpy Gimpy may be the most protected plant in the world. But some creatures still feed on its poisonous leaves. And one of these creatures is a species of ordinary nocturnal beetles. They can eat Gimpy Gimpy nonstop, and they don't care about its poisonous hairs at all. The toxin just doesn't affect these insects. This is the perfect meal for them, because no animal will dare to attack the bugs sitting on the Gimpy Gimpy. Except for the red-legged patamelon, who lives in the forests of Australia. It looks like a mini kangaroo. This cute animal also feeds on the poisonous plant. And no one knows how the patamelon protects itself from the toxins. But unlike these fearless creatures, people have to install warning signs around these dangerous territories and wear special clothing and masks not to get harmed by the plant. And those who have come close to the Gimpy Gimpy have to wash their clothes right afterward. Poisonous hairs are likely to remain on their pants and jackets. So you've seen one of the most poisonous plants in the world. But what about the most poisonous tree? We leave Australia and move to Florida. Imagine you're somewhere in a tropical forest near the Caribbean coast. It starts raining, and you decide to hide under a tree. Of course, this is already a bad idea, since lightning can strike the tree. But you should worry about something different this time. The tree seems ordinary. A great trunk, green leaves, and fruits similar to small apples. You stand next to it for a few seconds and feel your skin starting to burn. It feels as if drops of acid are falling from the sky. But no, it's still rainwater. But when a drop touches the surface of the tree, it gets filled with poison. Next, it bounces off the trunk, hits your skin, and causes the burning sensation. Never stand near a manchineel tree. And don't pluck its leaves and fruit either. The trunk, bark, branches, and fruit contain toxic juice. Even if the weather is warm and sunny, don't come close. The tree bark secretes toxins too. You may notice there's almost nothing growing around the tree. Mushrooms, shrubs, flowers, and other trees can't exist nearby. Animals also avoid this place. The poison produced by the manchineel tree is resistant to water and fire. That's why burning tree branches is also a bad idea. The smoke is very dangerous, especially for your eyes. Locals know this tree well, but tourists can easily get hurt. That's why people mark manchineel trees with paint as a warning. The Gimpy Gimpy and manchineel trees are scary plants, but the giant hogweed can be considered the king among toxic plants. Yeah, touching it can cause a severe allergic reaction, burning sensations, and whatnot. But the worst thing is that the giant hogweed is one of the fastest growing weeds in the world. Its seeds don't need long to develop and take over any territory. It quickly became one of the main invasive plant species in the world. The hogweed can affect entire ecosystems. The plant grows faster than others, displacing its competitors from their territories by harming them with poison. People spend a lot of money to fight this parasitic plant. If its seeds get into your garden, they'll occupy it in no time and it'll be pretty challenging to get rid of them. These huge plants were initially considered exotic. People used to buy and grow them to decorate their gardens. But then, hogweed seeds managed to escape, and a real invasion began. The plant can spray its seeds over a vast area when you cut it, and the wind can carry them even further away to neighboring territories. Scientists still haven't come up with an easy and cheap way to deal with this weed.